Welcome to the Femininja Project. I am your host, Cheryl I Love, middle-aged ninja hiding in plain sight, dedicated to restoring human dignity one person at a time and helping you unleash your personal power. Discover that it's possible to look like a woman, act like a lady, move like a ninja, and think like a warrior. And remember, men are always welcome on the Femininja Project. I'm so excited today because I have a very special guest and it's a man. So I have my first guy uh, as a guest on the Femininja show and I'm really excited about that. And so let me just introduce to you Craig Cayley. Hi, Craig. Hello. How are you? I'm doing good. I'm good. doing good. Welcome to the show. Are you a little nervous being the first guy on the Femininja show? Well, I'm a little nervous because I'm not sure the expectations, uh, they seem like they're probably pretty high. Well, of course, as a ninja, <laughs> yeah, I always do set the bar kind of high, but you're a guy that sets the bar pretty high yourself. I do, I do. I know. And you have a very special, what should I say, skill uh, set that you bring to the table. You are an author, but I know that's really not the main focus of your life, but you wrote a book on how to teach your tweens to be financially fit. And the name, the title of the book is Money Athletics. Yes, it's, it's one in what will become a series of books about the progression of, of parents grown, as their kids age from age 5 to 25 that uh, how to teach them to become financially fit so um, and there's things that you uh, as a parent would do that are age appropriate based on the age of the the kids so that's that's my journey that I'm on I think it's brilliant I mean it sounds so simple but yet it's complex because I think a lot of people parents even don't really understand how to be financially fit themselves so how do you teach that to a child or how do you impress upon a child that being financially fit is important uh, it's a good question and and one that I think can overwhelm a lot of parents and what I do is to take that scariness away and show them a, a realistic real life approach to teaching their kids about money that's also fun because mm -hmm. it's it's it, let's be honest my kids I have three kids uh -huh. that have gone through this program and now they're they're all three young adults and doing amazing uh amazingly financially oh congratulations <laughs> thank you and and kids do not want to talk about the power of compounding interest and the time value of money uh, it's important, mm -hmm. but it's not what kids resonate with. Well, it's so. pretty boring even as an adult who <laughs> knows the importance of understanding these things. So you have a really unique way of bringing this to life and making it fun and making it interesting. So share that. Well, how it started, it might it might help to to uh, uh, to discuss how I got into it before and then how it evolved from there. So. When my kids were, say, 9, 10, 11 years old, there was the constant, Dad, I want to buy this off of iTunes, or can you buy this off of Amazon? And being that the world of online shopping and downloading of apps is done via credit or debit cards, my kids didn't have that. So there was always the the borrowing money and paying mm -hmm. back, and it, it became kind of a pain as a parent. <laughs> and so... I kept thinking to myself, how do I solve this problem? And my background is, is an engineer, and, mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm, my fabric, the fabric of me is to figure out how to solve problems. And this was a tough problem to, to solve. And that there wasn't a lot of good material out there. A lot of the material books and, and things that I looked at kept talking about do everything with cash, have envelopes, have jars. And that didn't feel like real life to me. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to... Uh, embark on something that would help my kids grow into financially fit young adults uh, and not just be a game. So so how it came together was I thought, well, let's let them make a decision or the financial decision. So uh, I... Which is a big leap for a parent to do that. It is. It is. So when my two oldest were 11 and 12 years old, I, I implemented this program where I paid them a monthly salary. Mm -hmm. And 
and they took on financial responsibility for age-appropriate uh, items. And that included they were responsible for buying their own clothes, their own shoes, their own hot lunches, their gifts for birthday parties for, mm -hmm. for their friends when they went to those parties, and things of that nature. Now, mm -hmm. they weren't responsible for buying food or... Right. They weren't or, buying the groceries or paying the gas bill or correct, the electric bill. Correct. Correct. But, uh, but they were responsible for those things. And they were no longer did they have to ask dad to buy something off of iTunes or buy something off of Amazon. They could do it now. And what facilitated that is they had their own checking account. They had a Visa debit card. So even an 11-year-old oh. had, had the Visa debit card. And I also, part of the program, set up other accounts, savings accounts, mm -hmm. So long-term savings, we set up a, a college savings account that I dubbed the 401k. Dad matched dollar for dollar when if, when they contributed to that. Nice. Uh, charity is a big thing in our family, so so uh, we we allocated things for charity. But but again, it was all things that they would be making decisions on, and and also a very important part was an emergency account. Mm -hmm. And in my book, I call it the injury prevention <laughs> account yes, because that. it's. It really is injury prevention with regard to your financial health. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I implemented this program. And I kid you not, the first day I was intrigued by this because it so happened to be when we were implementing uh, this, it was right around Christmas, and we had to pay for the next month's upcoming hot lunches. Mm -hmm. And... The hot lunches at the time, because they were catered into the, the middle school that they went to, uh, they had to select from a menu for the upcoming month what lunches they wanted to buy, and then we had to pay for them ahead of time. And for the most part, it, it came out to about two lunches per week, so over a four-week period, it roughly was $20 mm -hmm. a month per kid. And and we went into, the, I, I factored that $20 into the budget for what I allocated them to spend. And the first questions that came out of their mouth were, Dad, do I, what if I don't want hot lunch? Can I keep that $20? And I said, it's your decision. If you don't buy the hot lunch on those days, then you're, you'll be responsible for making your own lunch, which they did most of the other days anyway. Both my, both my kids, and ultimately my youngest kid, when he, when he went on the program, they stopped doing hot lunches immediately and never did them again until like again, maybe high school. You are so brilliant. I mean, it's a brilliant idea because it's something they really wouldn't have thought about. But all of a sudden it's like, well, if I don't spend this money on the hot lunches, then I have this money in my account for something else that's more important to me. So you're teaching them right there how to make choices. It was, and it was, it was, it was them spending their own money uh, culminated in a different behavior than if they were spending my money. Right. And and they were, it was amazing to see how the relationship changed also because instead of me being a pest about how they manage money, it was more of a questioning coming back to me. Dad, what do I do if I, if, if, in this situation? Or I don't get that commercial on TV that says the credit card that pays you back. Can you explain that to me, Dad? Oh, how awesome. Or, so it was, it, in fact, it improved our relationship. Well, uh, it started a dialogue rather than you being the parent of saying right. do it this way and not this way, yes, no, and all that. It really opened up the dialogue. That's right. So they could dig more deeply into finances and not have to worry about compounding interest and stuff, that type of thing. Exactly. So, yeah, it was really, really phenomenal. Yeah. Great job. Yeah. I take my hat off to you. <laughs> I wish I could say that it was a, a conscious thing in the beginning. Mm -hmm. It was with my with my two oldest it was a journey that was into the unknown and it just happened to work out and then of course i tweaked things and, mm -hmm. and made adjustments and then ultimately where we're at today is that's what the money letics program is all about but the ninja in me absolutely loves that because you know we talk a lot about intuition 
So you followed your intuition, you followed your gut. Mm -hmm. And from that, again, it, it takes you on a journey that maybe is different than what you expected, a different path that has different directions that it goes to. But I mean, look at what you've created and three financially responsible and very fit adults. That's incredible. Yeah. And there's a, something else I wanted to bring up when you were talking about like the injury prevention account and that type of thing. So I wanted to talk about Again, the name of the book is Money Athletics. So you actually set this program up in the way you would be teaching a sport. Yes, I did. So explain that, because I, I found that really fascinating too. And even the cover of the book, me not being a sports person, I can tell though that there's some kind of, it looks like a football field or... Yes. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Good. Okay, got that. <laughs> <laughs> so... We happen to be a very sports-oriented family. All of us uh, grew up playing sports. I coached my kids in a variety of sports uh, when they were when they were young: soccer, baseball, lacrosse, and taught them to ski. Taught them to ski and snowboard, snowboard. and and all of that. So it's it's to be a good athlete. What do you have to do? You have to practice, and you 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 don't you don't have a perfect golf swing the first time you swing a club you have to practice that and and it's true with everything we do as human beings it's and it's not even sports oriented whether it's music whether it's uh acting or or whatever you whatever you do to become proficient at it requires practice mm -hmm. and the same is true with finances so i so I came at it from a sports angle because that's what I was comfortable with, but it meshes really well. To be a good athlete, you have to practice. So, And you have to have a good coach. And you have to have a good coach. So the progression of this is, is the first um, book in the series, which I didn't write first. Is, <laughs> that's interesting. <laughs> is, uh, is, is going to be called the Money Amateurs Program. So it would be parent, for parents of kids up to about age 10. Mm-hmm. And then you would graduate from a money amateur into the money athletics program, mm -hmm. which is the book I did write first. Mm -hmm. And that's for the tween years, so roughly 11 to 14-ish. And then you would graduate from the money athletics into the money all-stars program. And that would be for kids, parents of kids, age 15 to 18. Mm -hmm. And then the money all-stars plus uh, program is for uh, kids that are 18 plus so going into college or just young adults mm -hmm. and and that makes up what what ultimately is the money letics map series mm -hmm. map is the acronym for each of those so uh, and the injury prevention account mm -hmm. i call it that because it really is an insurance policy against your financial program we as adults <laughs> have uh I, I know so many people that if they have car problems. It really, uh, if you have a, a thousand dollar car repair mm -hmm. that comes up, there's a tendency for people to forego saving something or or allocating things to those uh, accounts that are for their future. Whether it's saving for retirement, maybe saving for a house down payment, maybe mm -hmm. it's saving for education. So if you're if you're pulling back from that. Uh, you're, you're putting those things at risk or putting them on hold. If you had an emergency account or, in my case, injury prevention account, you can draw on that and still leave those goals intact. So it's basically uh, an insurance policy against your financial health and your mm -hmm. financial future. So every financial advisor talks about the importance of this. And so, and I'm not really saying anything different. I'm just packaging it a little bit differently. You're packaging it differently and you're putting it in a context that people can really understand and relate to. Yeah. A little bit more than hearing, you know, the facts and having somebody kind of lecture yeah. you about, about it. So it is more of a game plan. Yeah, it is a game plan. And that's what the title of all of the books are, is, is your game plan to a financially fit kid, tween, mm -hmm. teen, or young adult. And uh, what's interesting, though, is kids don't get the idea. Dad, I don't, why do I need to put $10 a month or $5 a month into an injury prevention account? I don't have anything. And to I, worry about. <laughs> and there's always dad, mom and dad there to That's bail right. me out. That's right. But it came up the first time my daughter had to her iPhone. She had an iPhone. And this, wasn't, this was when she was in her, in her teenage years where she really had to tap into it. She broke her screen on mm -hmm. her iPhone, mm -hmm. and 
at the time there was, I don't remember what the deductible was, but she did have enough in her injury prevention account to pay for the deductible. Mm -hmm. Uh, Or maybe she didn't. I don't, I don't remember the specifics. Ultimately though, she utilized her injury prevention account to, to help her get a, get a new phone Mm -hmm. and it didn't derail all of the other things that she was saving for. Did she realize the magnitude of, of that? She didn't beforehand, afterwards, she was, she said, oh, I get it now, dad. Because you're really empowering your kids. Yeah. Because that is a form of, you know, personal power is something I I talk about a lot on the show. Obviously, it's really important to me. And that's one thing that is often overlooked is how to teach your kids to be empowered regarding their finances rather than to just stick their head in the sand or, you know, oh, no, I can't deal with this. Yeah. And, and. In all honesty, I think that's one of the things I'm most proud of is is watching my kids grow with that empowerment and that walking taller oh, uh, yay. That, and the confidence that uh, that comes with that. And and it and it'll show up in times that you least least expect it. I remember the first time, in fact, both both my two older were in college. I think there's been more examples, but this one really rang true when there was a scam going around. It's similar to the the IRS scam where oh, mm-hmm. where you get a phone call and mm-hmm. you owe taxes. And well, they were doing something like this on college campus, saying that you owe taxes, and if you don't pay them, you'll you'll be dropped from school. And and so it stressed my daughter out, mm-hmm. and she called me up, and the the scam said she owed like three thousand dollars and and i said honey you didn't even make three thousand dollars last year so so this is and i explained the whole scam she goes oh i get it dad and and uh and then i i texted my my son Mm -hmm. and i said has this happened to you and his response was of course it did dad he goes i saw it was a scam from far away and it was it was it's just that living things. And one, one that my daughter did happen when it was in high school, her debit card, the, the bank detected fraud on it. So uh-huh. they canceled it and she was stressed out. She was, she was thinking that she did something oh. wrong. And I explained to her that every person that is, has a, a credit or debit card has had this happen mm-hmm. at some point in their life. And it's just part of how financial stuff works. And she lived through that, and and from that point forward, she had the confidence. And I think it's happened since, and she 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 just rolls with it now. Well, and I think that level of confidence just seeps into every other aspect of their lives as well. Because if you have that much control and flexible control over your finances, and that kind of confidence, it does give you that sense that you can handle pretty much anything that comes your way. But I think it's so cute. And funny the way she's like, oh my gosh, I owe three thousand dollars in taxes, and you had to explain that she didn't even earn that much. But <laughs> that's exactly what happens when you go into that panic mode yeah. or almost that survival. It's like, oh my god, what am I going to do now? Yeah. So that's just really funny. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm sure she was really reassured once you pointed that out. Yeah. And the other thing I wanted to ask you, and maybe um, maybe this isn't fair, but I picked up this little story in your book and it was one time when you had to dip into your injury prevention fund it was and i think i'm guessing that might have been where was it the speeding ticket yes it was <laughs> <laughs> so which is true where where uh, the we were on a vacation where we were mm-hmm. doing a road trip from from colorado up to seattle and then kind of looping back through oregon and and uh, Utah and, and and back to Colorado. And while we were in, I think it was near Portland, we I went through a speed trap. Mm-hmm. And and I we were pulled over and we were in a minivan, all all three kids oh, and, <laughs> and and our kids had never been had have never experienced a police officer or state trooper, I think it was. Pulling over their dad. Right. Well, that's a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> this was the first time. But they've never been in any car where yeah. a police officer had had come up. And and so this this state trooper comes up to the car, all business. It was, it was, a, it was a woman that she, there was, I think I even tried to make light of the situation and she would have nothing of it. Oh, dear. <laughs> so, uh, so... 
I had to wait there and and came back and it was I want to I think it was a hundred and seventy dollar it was ticket. it was not small so and that was a long time ago it was it was while they were kids and uh, probably probably about ten years ago ten or eleven years ago and and so uh, uh, they said they were asking me questions about how how are you going to pay for that dad and. <laughs> They were, <laughs> were they asking in a way of curiosity, or were they kind of ribbing you a little bit, too? I think a little bit of both. I thought so. So that's kind of the dynamic that my kids uh-huh. <laughs> have have with me. So, uh, uh, And I'll be honest, some of the things that I put in the book early on, mm-hmm. I didn't have implemented uh, as, as well as I do now. Uh-huh. I, I, I put a lot of the structure together... As we were going, so my, my two oldest kids were were somewhat of the guinea pigs, right? And so at that time, I was learning myself, and it be, it made me become a better a better financial adult, mm-hmm. even though I was helping coach my kids, mm-hmm. and and of course they reinforce that with some some digs here and there. I'll bet they do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, it's interesting because even after reading your book and I I read it when I first got it when it first came out. I can't remember that was what 2 years ago? It was a year? roughly a year and a half ago. Okay. And so I started, you know, reading it then and I thought, "Oh, yeah, it kind of got me even thinking like I need uh, starting to pay closer attention to where I'm putting my money, where I'm saving it, you know, what I am spending the money on and, you know, no hot lunches for me, I can tell you that much. <laughs> I <laughs> my own um but it was just really interesting and then i put it away and then of course i pulled it back out again and started looking at it again knowing that you know i was going to be talking to you and it it just it's that awareness it's that reinforcement of to pay attention to everything which is something i talk about in my book about you know recovering from injuries and fitness over 50 awareness is the key to success in anything that you do so you're really teaching the tweens and parents yeah. how to be aware and i'm wondering if sometimes you talk to parents who are absolutely terrified about even broaching the subject and talking about finances to their kids because they don't even know where to begin that is a huge problem in fact i believe parents are more like they're less scared to talk about sex with their kids than well, they are about finances yeah, exactly but more kid, more parents will talk, have the sex talk with their kids than they will about money. Wow. Which is kind of sad. And, and you know what? It was true in my family. Wow. That, that my dad never, I never had a money talk with my parents ever. And, and, but. So how did you learn? Trial and error? A little bit. I had, I had a paper route when I was 11 and I had to manage my, all of my money back mm-hmm. then. I was the collection point. I think nowadays, if you if you order the paper, you pay directly to the the newspaper company. I but, think so. But back when I was a kid pedaling on a bike, I had to collect cash and envelopes, and and so I was a little a little mini banker trying to figure it all out. And <laughs> and getting tips too. Were you getting oh, tips? Oh yes. Yeah, that was a big part of it. I remember tipping the paper boy when I was a, a kid. Yeah, especially around home. Christmas, you uh-huh. you would put in a holiday card and and personalize it with each one and that that helped increase the tips <laughs> so it was it was fun but a lot of it I learned by trial and error also mm-hmm. and and uh, and I and I also always liked math and 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 figuring figuring those things out like I said earlier solving problems and mm-hmm. figuring stuff out is is part of who I am mm-hmm. and uh, so bringing all that together is where where I'm at today with uh, um, I you know being an engineer I did go to business school oh, did uh, you? for graduate uh, uh, graduate business school but I think my biggest credential is that I'm a parent mm-hmm. and and that I've lived through some some a lot of this and I've lived through some things that are quite honestly pretty funny too because the personalities come out with your kids too. Mm-hmm. I, there's some stories I tell in the book also where, especially with my boys, that they didn't always want to spend money on their clothes and shoes. <laughs> and and I remember uh, my boys, uh, it happened with both of them, but they they seemed to be perfectly fine going to school with holes in their shoes and 
and, <laughs> and so we had to we had to uh, have ask that them, talk huh? have that talk but it also changed our behavior a little bit at the holidays we might buy gift cards for for Kohl's or, or where, where they uh-huh. could buy they'd have to buy it on clo- uh, use it on clothes uh-huh. so so there was some of that that happened. Well, but... That's really funny. And this just is a silly memory that just popped in my head. I had a friend of um, mine from physical therapy school who was, a, of course, a lot younger than me. But she, her husband, a fiancé at the time, would not spend any money on clothes. He would go to Goodwill and he would buy, you know, secondhand shoes and stuff. And she was so horrified by that because she was such a clothes horse. And she and I did some serious damage after graduation when you know, we had <laughs> paychecks and we went shopping together. But I, the, some part of my brain was like, I think her husband has it figured out. I don't know if I'd be wearing secondhand shoes, but, you know, sometimes you don't need to buy expensive clothes to yeah. look good. Yeah. And, and, and what's fun is, is I was letting my kids figure that out. Mm-hmm. Not, uh, my daughter was definitely a spender. She... She liked spending money on clothes and shoes, so mm-hmm. she was the opposite of the boys. Mm-hmm. But she was a master at the end of every month, taking her accounts down to pennies. Wow! And and she might not have enough money left to. In fact, I tell a story where she didn't even have enough money to buy a birthday present to one of her best friends that happened towards the latter part of a month, and and. She worked through that. She, in fact, made a gift that was treasured. And, and so it was Aww. a great learning experience. But in the end, she realized that she has to pick a career, in, in her <laughs> words, that raises her top line number. Mm-hmm. Basically, she needs to have a career where she makes more money. And she is starting med school this summer. Oh, <laughs> so she's going to be a doctor. Oh, congratulations. Unfortunately, she's going to go into severe debt. Yeah, does she to, know that part? She does, and we've had terrific conversations around how she's going to fund mm-hmm. uh, uh, fund getting through medical school because it's extraordinarily expensive. But it's it's one of her dreams, and and she's so excited. So we've had great conversations about uh-huh. about how to work through that and pros and cons. Does she go into the military to help with right. it, or are there other programs? Because some, there are programs to help yeah. to help fund that, and she's figuring it out. Yeah. Wow. Good for her. Yeah. So, what year is she in school? She is well. She's graduated from okay. from uh, Colorado State. Okay. And so she's working right now. She's working two jobs in in the hospital. And wow. And so she's. Uh, doing that and then this July we'll move her to Omaha Mm -hmm. well congratulations again I mean you and and your wife must be really really proud we're we're very proud and very blessed yeah Yeah. well you worked very hard so you have to take some of the credit too so what would you tell parents what advice would you give them if they're struggling with trying to teach their children how to be financially fit or financially responsible or even if you're talking to adults because in my own opinion, it's never too late to change your ways. And you can always learn new habits and interrupt old patterns that are not serving you well. So what advice would you give maybe somebody who's in their 40s, who's never uh, even thought about starting a 401k or a retirement plan or whatever? Is uh, th- What I would recommend is start. Mm-hmm. I'll just leave it at that. That, mm-hmm. that I think there's so much advice out there about you need to start with so much. I recommend starting with re- without regard to how much. Mm-hmm. So even if you start an emergency account that's that you only fund $5 a month, mm-hmm. start. Mm-hmm. If you start a 401k and can only do 1% of your salary, start. Mm-hmm. If you if you need a longer term savings to save for a down payment on a house or a down payment on a car or whatever it might be, start. And 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 even if you start small, by starting it gets it gets you moving. And then as situations change, you can adjust mm-hmm. just those numbers higher maybe. But I think what I've seen a lot, both with parents and kids, is and and all sorts of adults, is there's this level of paralysis that sets in of I don't know where to start and and I have this advice 
that's coming to me that just feels overwhelming mm -hmm. so they they don't start mm -hmm. so that's my big advice well the paralysis is key and that again i'm going back to you know survival mode you know going back to the ninja training it's the the fight or flight yeah you know and freeze and a lot of people do freeze when they're faced with something that's that's scary and that's incredibly frightening to think about being financially um gosh sick let's just say especially mm -hmm. as we're heading toward you know like my husband and i are you know, I guess heading toward retirement, although I'm never going to retire because I don't want to. I'm having too much fun. And, <laughs> you know, well, what would I do instead? So, but a lot of people, you know, there, there is that, that fear. And I, I have a friend who retired too soon. And I even remember when she was retiring and I said, are you sure this is a good idea? You know, you're 62 years old, you're still healthy. And she goes, oh yes, I've talked to people. And so I thought she had talked to a financial advisor and a planner. And I found out recently that, no, it was the people at the Social Security office that she was talking to. And now she's actually receiving probably $600 less than what she thought she was be going to be receiving and developed some health issues and stuff. And I I'm so sad for her. And she doesn't even live here in Colorado, but uh, she actually is now going to a food bank. Oh, wow. And it just breaks my heart. So... I think that maybe if you take a little bit more, um, I don't want to say responsibility, what's the word that I'm looking for, proactive approach, and even just asking, you know, and, and checking in with a financial advisor on a regular basis, you know, at that point, it's so much better than trying to flounder around by yourself and figure it out because it is overwhelming. Yeah. And I know we had, the last time we saw our financial advisor it was just so funny. She kind of smacked us upside the head a couple of times, and I'm going, whoa, whoa, whoa. And she scared me to death. I thought, oh, my goodness, we're going to be living in cardboard boxes or whatever. And then when we were finally done, an hour and a half of all of this was over, we stood up to leave, and she says, well, this is wonderful. I'm so excited for you. This is absolutely great. This is really exciting. And I'm just looking at her, nodding my head, and finally I said, what's the exciting part? Because I didn't get any of that from you. And she says, no, no, it's my job to do that. Just, you know, you guys are doing really great. And I thought, oh, my God, I just about had a heart attack. Well, what's what's interesting is where I'm different than a financial advisor. I, I, I in fact, have been partnering with a number of financial advisors because if you don't, as, as an adult or if your kids growing up don't, figure out the stuff that we're talking about here, a financial advisor can't really help you. Right. So I'm sort of the prerequisite to having success with a financial advisor. Mm -hmm. And and so it, call it, yeah, that prerequisite for the next adulthood. Step. Or, yeah. yeah. So you are basically a coach. I think of myself as a money, money coach or money letics coach. Mm -hmm. And... And so I, I'm not, I don't get compens compensated based on investments and all, mm -hmm. nor do I want to do that. There's a lot mm -hmm. of people that that's a, their expertise. What I do is to help coach and guide you with raising financially fit kids and young adults. That's where my focus is. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I can certainly dispel advice for a 45 or 50 year old. But that's 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 not your area of expertise, and that's no, not where your passion is. I really want to change the the direction of our young generations in a positive way, and that's the legacy I want to leave. And and I get so much joy watching kids and parents tell me stories about how their how their son or daughter did something different as a relate as it relates to uh, them becoming more financially fit. Well, that's awesome. Well, you certainly have a really good legacy start and you're a fine example with your kids. So I know there are a lot of parents listening right now. I know there's probably a lot of grandparents who are listening right now. Uh, when your book first came out, I put it in my dance bag and I went to ballet class and started showing it to some of the women there. And I dance with women all you know from the ages of 18 to 80, believe it or not. They're all in ballet class. And there were three of my friends who were grandparents, recent, you know, just had their first grandbabies. And all three of them, you know, like took pictures with their phone. They says, we're getting this book mm -hmm. to give as a gift to their kids. So yeah. you're already making an impact. So how can people, first of all, find your book? 
and get a hold of you? So the best way is through my website. Okay. And my website is accessed via www.moneyletics. So mm-hmm. it's combining money and athletics together into one word, moneyletics, M-O-N-E-Y-L-E-T-I-C-S. Okay. And we will include that on the podcast when it's posted so people can see that. Yeah. And then, um, so that's how to find the book and your website. It, it'll find, it'll help you find the book, my website, the other, you can uh, hire me for one-on-one coaching. I'm developing online training classes. And if you want me to come speak at your group or organization, it'd be something that I would be uh, very excited to do. Okay. Well, is there anything um, that we didn't cover or any last thoughts you would like to leave with our audience? Uh, I, I would say that uh, the last thing would be what we're talking about here is is more of a life skill than it is a money skill. It's, it's we all, we all, as we grow, need to have, have control of our finances. And what better thing to impart on your kids and your, your loved ones than, than a great life skill that sets the stage for them to be successful in the future? And guess what? It can be fun. It doesn't mm-hmm. have to be an arduous endeavor that, that people run and <laughs> run away from. It can be very fun. And, and I can assure you that it was very fun for me. In, in raising our kids. It's a game and you created one heck of a good game plan. So congratulations on that. That's Thank wonderful. You. So check out Craig's website, get his book, contact him if you have any questions. And I just have to ask you, Craig, see, now that wasn't so painful, was it, being the first man on the Feminine Show? It was not. Well, was congratulations not. on that, too. So thank you all for listening. I really appreciate it. Please feel free to contact me, uh, questions, comments, whatever. I uh, would love to hear from you. And make sure you contact Craig, too, and just get to know him. He's a really great guy. So, And we, we want to empower the kids, the next generation, to make sure that they really are financially fit for life. Thanks for listening. Until next time, bye now. And that's a wrap on another episode of The Feminine Ninja Project. Thank you so much for listening. And remember, be safe, be strong. And until next time, bye now.